Okay. You've got great admin staff on the back. Yes, <laughs> you, you really do. So we're good to get started, me. Okay. Welcome everybody. Let's go through introductions. Rafael Ortega, District Five. Mary Jo McGuire, Commissioner District Two. Rena Moran, uh, Commissioner District Four. Joanna Berg, County Manager. Karen Francois, Deputy County Manager, Information and Public Records. Katrina Mosser, Director of Enterprise and Administrative Services. I'm Tracy Nelson in Information and Public Records. Angie Petruk, Interim Racial and Health Equity Administrator, Visa Policy and Planning. Tristan Martinson, uh, County Commissioner District 3. Victoria Reinhardt, Commissioner District 7. My Chan Sean, Ramsey County Commissioner for District 6. Thank you. We begin that there. Jen Hammer, Integrated Health and Justice Administrator. Whitney Moore, Planning Specialist. Uh, Barbara Freed, Music Department. Dean, Resident Experience Design Planning Manager. One Master Workforce Functions. Larry Zimmerman, Policy and Planning. Damon Master, Vision of Innovation and Strategy. Sure. Dean Kluber, Property Management. David Herrera, Great Labor Liaison. Ali Ali, International Assistance Services. Melinda Donway, Manager of Enterprise Tracy West, Director of Petrus coming out of their charge. Thank you all. Uh, we're here to get an update on residents first. I, without further ado, let me turn it over to Karen. Uh, we had about an hour and 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, it is always a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, today, we are here to get an update on the Residents for Strategic Priority. Um, on the agenda today, you can see we'll do an overview. We'll be talking about um, what does it look like to achieve Residents First. Um, if we can go to the next slide today, our presenters, uh, myself, I'll be saying a few words here. Katrina Mosser, who is our Director of Enterprise and Administrative Services. She is also the Chair of the Residence First Advisory Board. Tracy Nelson is the Residence First Program Manager. And Andre Petruk is uh, the Race and Health Equity Administrator for IPR. Um, and she's been doing a lot of work with us. Um, Tiffany Udine, who is the Resident Experience Design Planning Manager, and we are very, very happy to have a special guest with us today, Barbara Whitfield Freeman, who is our resident representative um, for the Resident Experience um, Advisory Council Hub, also known as REACH. I hope you all know um, by now, but there may be some who are, are not familiar yet. Um, and I think it's always worth reiterating that Residence First is an integrated countywide approach to achieving the goals that are set uh, in the strategic priority. The R1 program, because of funding constraints, does not fund all the work across the county that centers residents, however, the R1 ethos has been operationalized and normalized across the county in a consistent fashion. The Residence First Advisory Board that's chaired by Director Massa, Mars, Mosser, sorry, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I like how you said it. <laughs> Massa, um, also includes leaders from across the county, um, some of who are here with us, um, and they have helped to prioritize um, efforts that receive program funding. This has helped to shape the overall focus on the resident experience. And although we know that all departments are doing things to operationalize a more resident focused experience, R1 is an intentional effort to improve the way we deliver the needs-based services across the enterprise. There are uh, many projects that are going on across the county, as I mentioned, that embody the R1 principles. Uh, we are not going to be updating on every single one of those projects, 
Um, but uh, there are uh, some underway that we will be talking about here today, and we're going to focus on the ones that we funded, will fund, and those items that are included in our 2024 goals. Now I'm going to turn it over to Director Mosser um, to take us into the, the presentation. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Chair, Commissioners, County Manager, um, it's great to be here today and update you on the work of the strategic priority. Um, as uh, Deputy County Manager Francois said, there's a lot of work that's gone on, and I know we're under limited time right now. So um, we'll we'll talk a little bit about how we got to where we are today, but I want to um, make sure that we focus a lot of the time about where we're going, hearing from um, others in the county and our resident that is here today on behalf of the REACH uh, group. Um, and really focus on kind of where we're going and, and provide you guys an opportunity to get more information on that and ask questions that you may have. So we'll try to go quickly through some of the background pieces. Um, but to make sure we're all grounded in the same place, um, make sure that everyone knows what the residents first strategic priority is and that focus on effective, efficient and accessible operations and really putting the resident at the center of all the work that we do. Co-creation, input, the feedback loop, all of those pieces so that the resident and human centered or the resident centered design is at the focus of the work that we're doing. So um working towards how we got to achieving residents first and really installing that ethos across the county taking a look at how well, we've gotten to where we are some of the governance and the projects we've done to date so as um, we've referenced we have the residents first advisory board this is a um, list of all the members that currently sit on the residents first advisory board and this governance group was first created in 2019 when the strategic priority became the strategic priority that it is today. But the membership and how it works has evolved over time as we've learned. One of the key pieces I think of the ethos of Residence First is not only putting the resident at the center, but also being flexible and nimble and adapting in the continuous improvement as we go and learn. And our governance structure is an example of that. We started with a smaller group that was focused on the entities across the county that do enterprise-wide work and support those functions, such as, um, well, today, enterprise services. It wasn't in existence in 2019, so that's a new addition. But um, communications, information services, property management, all of those pieces support the entire county. As we evolved and grew, um, recognizing that we need representation from every service team, on there and also representation from our residents. It's residents first. How do we have residents at the table? And that we'll go into some more detail later when we talk when Tiffany and Barbara talk about reach, but that's a uh, the counterpart entity with the residents first advisory board that's internal facing. Um, throughout the work that we've done with the residents first advisory um, board, we've also take a look at our roadmap be more strategic in what we're funding and how we reach that goal of residents first across the county and really have that oversight, regular standard project update. So we're making sure that not only are we funding priorities that meet our county needs, but also we're achieving those outcomes that we say we are seeking to achieve with those funds. And if the funds are not being used, we claw them back. I don't want to say claw back. We didn't like that word. <laughs> we bring them back <laughs> and are able to reinvest them in different areas. Um, so that's one of the very important pieces of governance um, around this. And I think is really an example of how you can create a governance structure for a strategic priority in the county that represents areas across the county and really ensures that we're moving forward to achieve the outcomes of the strategic priority through an integrated approach. So I'll go into a few... This is one slide that I may kind of go quickly over because there's a lot of information on the next <laughs> two slides of projects that we've funded since 2019. I see here that the top is oh, yeah, we can see that. But, anyways, you see it on your printout. <laughs> These are projects since 2019 to today um, that have been funded through Residence First. Um, in addition to all the great projects that are listed here, it also shows a bit of that evolution that we took in the governance structure. Um, when we started in 2019, it was more what was coming to us. You know, first come, first serve, who came to us to ask money? We, it needed to be resident focused. 
Um, but there wasn't necessarily a pipeline and strategic vision about what we're going to be funding. And over time, as you can see through the evolution of the projects, we've been more and more strategic about what we're funding and given priority to things that are residents focused and needs based as well was a um, priority of our work as we move forward. I do want to point out that most, if not all of the projects that are listed on this slide and the following one got seed funding, got um, the resources dedicated that it needed through residents first to get going and are now operationalized in the county and are part of the regular budget, are part of the way we do work and how we're instilling that ethos across the county. An example of that is enterprise services. Um, we got funding that to start the service centers and to start navigator services during COVID, a significant amount of month funding from R1 to get that started um, through 20, 20 and 2021. And now it's part of the regular budget cycle that you all and residents and everyone has input on as we approve the budget and move forward. Excuse me, Katrina, yeah. Victoria. Yeah. I just, um, these listings really don't tell us a lot about what actually happened there. Yeah. And so as a follow-up, I would really like to have details on each and every one of these sure, so yeah. that I know what is the, what was the purpose and did we achieve it? Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. That was my question too. Oh. <laughs> We're happy to follow up that. And thank you for that. And I recognize we have limited time today to get yeah. to each one. So we have yes. to follow up with the detail. Um, I will note on the next slide, um, we have number 17, the resident parking and transit accessibility one, relatively smaller park project as you compare it to some other ones, but I pointed out here because it was an example of a project that we needed to get some funding to get it up and going and see how it worked and now it's been operationalized in the enterprise and administrative services budget. It's an opportunity for residents who are coming into our buildings, coming into service centers, to get parking paid for, get bus tokens to get to and from um, accessing services in the county. And one of the things that had been a hindrance to getting it going today before they had R1 funding was someone might come into a county building, let's say the East building, um, and be accessing MFIP services and another resident accessing um, SNAP services. And they're, because of funding streams, might, well, I have funding for you because you're accessing this service, but I don't have funding for you because you're accessing that service to pay for parking. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the, the height of bureaucracy and complexity not serving the resident. So we were able to get C funding through residents first to, to set it up and get it started and see what the demand and need was. And now we've operationalized it with an EAS. So we don't have to go through that level of well, you're eligible for parking, but you're not. We just Excuse want to me. provide it for our Excuse me, Katrina. Can you yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And that's a really good example. And it makes me think, you know, what what's the process that this gets brought to the residents first committee? Like, because I think our frontline staff, especially, you know, whether it's navigators, it's FAS workers, our frontline staff they know what would fix and be most appropriate. They hear it. What's the process internally to get that to this committee? And what does that look like? Well, and that is a great example. Thank you, Chair okay. and Commissioner, of something that came from people every day working and mm -hmm. knowing that this is a barrier. How do we get over this hurdle? Mm -hmm. um, and I should have pointed this out in the governance and also a lot of the folks that are here today. Um, we have the Residence First Advisory Board, but we also have set up a service center leadership team, which includes some members that are overlap of the Residence First Advisory Board, but also some directors that are um, just on one or the other. And through that membership, we represent the majority of the county and service providing. And so through those memberships, through that direction, it, um, staff can bring it up to their supervisors and through that structure. And that is the, the I guess, cleanest way. Okay. The other way that I think is crucial and crucial to residents first is when we hear about a barrier from residents, yeah. that they're coming in and we can't get into X, Y, or Z building because of this, physical barrier, this financial barrier, this, um, you know, the location isn't the most ideal for us. So getting more and more to, uh, again, that vision of the one-stop shop or service centers, but also meeting residents yeah. where they're at. So we're removing those barriers. For them. Do we have 
do we just have a, I, I, I'm feeling like it's still too complicated mm -hmm. because you have to know who to talk to, to talk to, to talk to, and if it's mm -hmm. a good idea. Is there a, is there a way that they can go on the website, send yes. a comment? Because I'm also thinking of like, I've been out with the snowfall drivers and they're like, you know, it'd be really great if we could do X, Y, and Z for residents as we're plowing their driveways so they didn't just plow and we close it, right? And so how do they know how to share so that it gets funded? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. We'll be talking about that in a okay. few slides. Well, okay, great. And, and we actually do have that mechanism um, on RamseyNet. There's actually a page that's devoted to residents first. And if you have an idea, you can put an idea in there and it will come to, to me and some other folks as a program manager. And then we bring that forward. So we would then talk to the representative on their advisory board to help them then sponsor and shepherd it through. Um, so that is that, that's actually existed for about three years. Maybe so. we just need to lift that up one more time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. and and we've so. tried to we advertise that via you know, communications, and then we also have um, coming out of the residents first advisory board, they cascade information out to okay. all of their service leaders, and that's one of the things that we've talked about too. So Excellent. thank you for the question. Excellent, thank you. And to Angie's uh, comment as well, uh, she'll also be talking about okay. from the resident public perspective okay. how more of those can be brought. To recognize any one council or committee only represents the residents that sit on that at that table. Right. So she'll talk more about that. Um, I'll just round out kind of talking about projects we've funded to say that a number of the projects that are been funded through R1, you're also going to have heard or will hear updates specifically on those projects. Um, this year or in the coming months. Human services modernization and the FAS case file management is a perfect example of that. I know you've heard from Dana DeMaster and others about that project. We're going to be coming um, forward in the next few months with more in-depth update on service centers and enterprise services. So we'll, you'll hear a lot more about some of these projects, not only from the list that we'll provide, mm -hmm. but also um, some of the ongoing projects in the coming months. Yeah. So, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I'm interested in for more information around the resident parking and transit accessibility because I know when I was spending a lot of time downtown on Seventh Street, um, people were parking like on the streets and not really in the parking ramp. So I would like to know um, what is that demand and need like? Uh, who is using the services and and how do they find out about it before they park on the street? Right? Yeah. Great. We will follow up some more information. Thank you. All right. So um, as I referenced that as we um, continue to evolve in our governance and structure here um, with Residents First, we continue to be more strategic in what we're investing in. And one of the key projects that led to us getting there is the top one on this page, the number 14, the R1 roadmap. And that work, working across the county and with residents and also with a consultant, led to developing um, this oops, slides, um, which I know has is kind of complicated looking has a lot of information on it, um, but we've affectionately called it our place map because it kind of laid the groundwork and laid the, the setting for how we want to continue to invest in residents first and what our kind of North Star is for residents first and all the different areas that we term capabilities of the county that we need to build and develop if we truly want to be this residence first organization that has got all of the um, strength and capability to meet those needs of our residents. You'll see at the very middle of it is resident experience design. And that is one of the priorities and one of the top priorities of the residence first work as we move forward. And Tiffany um, and the residence first advisory board have seeded that work and we continue to build and develop. And we'll go into some more detail about that later. Um, you know, earlier you mentioned the navigators, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not seeing that in this presentation. And how, um, I mean, a navigator is supposed to be able to provide a breadth of information for people that don't understand the system and whatever. Um, I, I guess I haven't heard much about it. And what I have heard was kind of like it was disconnected. Um, from being able to uh, get information to the navigator, um, that there was a disconnect there. But regardless, um, it seems like that's a pretty big part of what we're doing here for, with residents first. And I guess I'm kind of wondering why it's not highlighted here. 
Because, I mean, that's who people, when you think about a resident coming in, they want somebody that helps them find their way. And the projects are one thing, but you need to be able to get the input. And how does that work? And, and so I'm a little concerned about that, to be honest with you. Chair Commissioner, thank you for the question. And um, that as I reference enterprise services, which started Navigator Services and Service Centers was seed funded, got the it start from residents first and now has been operationalized as part of the budget. We are planning to come back. I, I hope it will be in August, maybe a little bit earlier um, with a more in-depth update about not only where we're at with service centers and how that's growing and some of the renovations, but also about Navigator Services and more details on that because it's now part of the county. It's part of the ethos of the county and not a focus of 2024 and our residents for strategic part. Could I get, um, I don't want to wait until August. So could I get like kind of like a workflow or all of the commissioners yeah. when I ask for something, it's for yep. everyone. Um, a workflow of how the navigators work. How does the, a resident connect with them? And where is the information shared? Um, it's, I, I would just like to have, I would like to know how it functions um, so that it's truly getting the breadth of services that we know our res residents need and they all need different services. So that makes it even more difficult. And, and where the feedback loop is, I would think yeah. that if residents are connecting with navigators, they're a great yeah. voice for the residents back yeah. into the issue. Definitely. Mr. Chair and Commissioner, that's a very good question. And yes, we are going to be getting into more detail about that. You know, if we can do it a lot sooner than August, we will. Uh, today, we were going to focus on the uh, strategic priority mm -hmm. and all of the different aspects of the strategic priority. Um, navigators, navigator services, service centers, that's certainly an inter integral part of the, of the work that we're doing uh, to um, meet the the um, the strategic priority, uh, but today it's a broader look at yeah. the entire uh, program. And I guess what I'm asking for here is really an org chart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so that I can see how navigators interconnect sure. with other um, other county employees and then with the county. So mm -hmm. I would think an org chart would be uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Happy to. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to talk about navigator services. I know Melinda. <laughs> um, so, uh, in the interest of, so we'll talk a little bit about um, kind of the idea of what this roadmap is. There's a lot of capabilities on here that are being led by other areas of the county. I'll call out the equity work, which I know is being led by our RIAs. So that's not a space where necessarily residents first needed to step in and make it its strategic priority because it's being led in a different area. Facility development, you know, Jane Kruger and property management is working in that. So it's not that everything on this slide is being led by residents first, but there were some key areas that weren't necessarily being focused on or needed some of that integrated approach that residents first can bring to it and really did focus on the resident and needs-based um, or the building block to effectively provide services for residents. So through our work, through working with um, staff across the county and residents and the consultants that we did have that helped us you know, do a survey and, and develop all of this work, as I said, we focused on resident experience design. We've also focused on the resident relationship management, which is one of the blue circles in the top right there. And then the pieces that are down below in the kind of gray black color are foundational pieces that need to, to support the rest of the organization and um, capabilities. And so one of the areas that became clear we needed to invest more money in is data management in order to support much of the other work across mm -hmm. the county. So those are the three areas that residents first has identified as um, key areas to um, invest in in the coming years. Here's Gloria. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I just keep coming up with Okay, so the biggest thing that I hear in my office is about case management. Mm -hmm. And I know it's just the same size circle here, but um, and it's not just about technology. It's not just about making things convenient. It, it of course, is going to go to uh, staffing as well. Now, I don't think that that's what this is supposed to do as far as staffing, but um, it would be helpful when we're doing residence first 
in different areas, but specifically in case management, if this group looked at, okay, where, where are needs not being met and how can we make that easier? And that may be a recommendation for more staffing or different types of staffing. Um, you know, case managers need not just to be the case manager, but the, the clerks and the aides uh, that help make that uh, smoother. Um, it may be beyond the scope of what you want to do, but I just think it would be helpful somewhere in the organization to have that discussion about how is the workflow going? Because that's mm -hmm. what case management is about. And it's not working. Yeah. And that's a, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, that's one of the whole discussions behind the capability is it's not so much about exactly organizationally who's doing it. It's how do you do it as a whole? And how do we bring it all together? Exactly what you're talking about so that we are no longer siloed into these mm -hmm. different areas of you do one piece, you do one piece, you do one piece. Now we look at it as how do we do that together? And how do we, how do we, that's the reason the county is in existence is to effectively perform this um, instructions. And so that's why we're looking at this as a capability area, as opposed to yeah. an organizational or structural, um, if that makes sense. It does, but we need to somehow connect those because when it comes to budget time, mm -hmm. it, absolutely, um, we can have, if we don't bring that information forward, it makes it more difficult for us to get the job done. And um, I think oftentimes we are shifting chairs <laughs> and what we really need to do is fill more chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and because that's how people get served. Mm -hmm. And so that's one that I think is the, the possibilities here of informing that uh, because I, I think there is a disconnect right now between um, what we're trying to do and residents first and how it impacts our budget and how it impacts the service teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we get the work done? Mm -hmm. And helping inform that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. um, I had made a note actually on here that this is 22 capabilities and is not intended to create 22 new silos. <laughs> there are all, no silos and integrated. And I think the work Tiffany has been doing around resident experience society is an example of that. We cannot do that work without the RIAs, without um, all of the groups across the county that have representation from residents. And how do we kind of integrate that all together and not be working with the silos? Um, before you move on, can you yeah. um, can you just touch base on what like this transformation management and data management, like all all the things that's in between there? I see Internet of Things. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, some of this, I think, honestly, is um, picked from the consultants. So we've we've Ramsey-ified some of it, but we use this um, diagram to show you today. So the Internet of Things is quite literally how people access virtually our things, um, our services, our information. So that area is being led and they're working through an RFP or I think it's been awarded now um, for replatforming our website. So that's an example of how we continue to build that um, capability led through communications in our website. So that's one example of a capability that is intricately tied to all services in the county and definitely to residents and is being led by an area outside of residents first, quote unquote, in terms of our funding and program as it's being led by communication. So if you can go out and tell everybody that you know about the internet, <laughs> <It's not> the <laughs> internet. I actually heard it before and, and <laughs> had the same question was like, well, now that I know it, <laughs> it makes sense actually. <laughs> And then, you know, as I referenced, one of our uh, priorities is data management and that is how do we manage and make our data useful across the county? So it's key to effective case management, to, um, but it's also key to the internet of things. It's also key to um, equity, because if we don't have the data to show our outcomes, how do we keep moving forward on that? So it's, it's a foundational piece across the board to really move forward with a lot of our capabilities. You're more of an expert on data stuff, so I don't oh, want to well, correct yeah. me if I got anything wrong. No, you're fine. And, and the transformation management piece, I think, is incredibly important because that's it's in the old way of doing things was it was project by project, and you just did it. You said I'm done, but use it. 
transformation management says, how do you ingrain that into how that change and that transformation into the organization so that it's just not a, I'm done, I'm it walk away. It's how do we make that then be the new way that we do business? How do we flex those muscles within the county to make sure that as we're doing data management or as we're doing quality assurance, that just becomes ingrained in the way that we do our work going forward. And that's the whole buzzword around transformation management, but it's just, it's it's taking it from a point in time to making it a, a way of doing things. Right. Thank you. Well, we'll go into a little bit more detail now about some of the, 20, or the 2024 strategic priority goals. Um, as I already noted, one of the priorities for Residence First, this is all based again on the roadmap, is modernizing our data management. That piece um, we have in our pipeline and are, are um, looking forward to getting, getting into more. We're in a, uh, right now they're planning on kind of ramping up more in the second half of 2024. So we're not going to get into a, a lot of detail on that um, capability today, but look forward to bringing more information back to you end of this year, maybe beginning of next year when we update on the strategic priority again. Um, another one of the priority goals is around the community accountability partnership or CAP work that is being led out of policy and planning and with Ria's and uh, with Angie, we'll be updating on that in a few moments. And then the last but not least priority goals around increasing and improving integrated service delivery. I will touch some on what we're doing around service centers, navigator services, our language services um, and how we're moving that forward. But again, we'll also go into more detail soon with you um, before August. So this is uh, another funding stream side or another funding slide that shows the funding priorities for 2024 based on those priorities. Again, data management is one of them. Um, our resident relationship management, which is part of improving that service delivery also virtual service delivery and expanding how we have a online service center and continue to develop those services. And then a big, the vast majority of the funding around service center renovations. You'll see that there is an anticipated funding shortfall um, based on what's in our pipeline and what funding we have for residents first. We are planning to pursue our traditional technology funds for some of the technology focused projects through the ITP or um, the information technology portfolio, which goes to the technology governance committee. Hopefully that will make up the shortfall. I will also note that part of the reason for the shortfall is that the service center renovations was not necessarily something we anticipated spending R1 money on, because typically we might spend capital investment money on that. But given budget constraints, given where funding was available, this was the best uh, identified as the best resource or best pot of money to go to to update some of those service centers and continue to expand and not just renovate, but expand services at those service centers. Excuse me, Gina. Can you share with me? Um, so you have the St. Paul Opportunity Center, right? That you spent 90000 on. And then you talked about the Downtown Service Center that you spent a million dollars and then there's another three million here. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that entails? Thank you, Commissioner Claire. Um, do you I wasn't involved with the spa piece for you? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Kim. <laughs> um it the Simple Opportunity Center was opened, I believe, in 2019, 2020. Yeah. Spa. Anyway, it was a partnership with the um Catholic Charities and the Dorothy Day area to open up a kind of a satellite service center, if you will, or it wasn't. Um, we we are in, uh, we use that space along with some other um, community partners. So it's a, it's a community partner space, if you will. And it was getting that funding to get that up and running and to get technology over there and to get it um, going. So that's at the Catholic Charity. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, then you mentioned the other two downtown, the downtown service centers. centers renovation. Yeah. So originally, and Katrina, do you want to talk about this more? Is it your wheelhouse? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the downtown service center is the one at Metro Square. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved there as, uh, I'm trying to remember the timing of everything, but we moved there um, out of the anything? East Building during the pandemic mm -hmm. and have been through now two different locations there as we continue to grow. And now this is our first opportunity um, to build a service center from the kind of ground up. I know we're not building enterprise in Metro Square from the ground, but 
a purpose-built space for the service center. So there's a lot of thought and detail and discussion has gone on with staff and residents and leaders to develop um, a floor plan and, and plan for the downtown service center, which brings in a lot of those elements that we've talked about with all of you and comes from a human centered design perspective, brings in artwork, brings in furnishings, brings in children's activities and families areas that warm up the space and finish the space. And then also have plenty of different flexible space to meet with residents, have wellness rooms, a lot of different elements that will help meet the residents' needs, no matter in what point of their life and what configuration of family they're coming in to access services, they have a welcoming and um, inclusive space for them to come to. So that's where um, the $3 million that is anticipated for um, the downtown service center is going. And then Maplewood is at the Maplewood Mall and we're looking to um, renovate the space there and again, make it a little more purpose-built. You know, there's a, more limitations at a mall than there is in our own building, but make it more purpose-built and also with both of them, expanding the service, the footprint and the services that we have there to, to continue to move towards that vision of the one-stop shop. So residents can um, access all the services that they may um, be looking for in one day and be, be bouncing around and have that navigator help them. So when you come back, you'll be a little bit more detail of what that looks like from the million dollars you spent already to the three million that you want to spend. Yes. In the upgrades and the warming and all the things you talked about, but that looks right. Yeah. I would I would I was hoping we might be able to give you more detail now. We're still working through the finalization of some of those plans. And really I'm excited to bring it to you and also um to our residents about how um not only they've been included and that feedback to how we design the space, but are still being part of the work today to provide feedback on those finishing touches, which we know is also important about how we make it welcoming and inclusive. Can I just suggest, I, I'm afraid we're not gonna have enough time before budget season, not today. I mean, oh, oh, I'll look at the clock. Yeah, schedule <laughs> workshops to get this update. When you have that, I, I really think what I'm hearing is we want to go deeper. This is maybe too high level for mm -hmm. a workshop because it's not telling us what we clearly need to know. So if you would go deeper on these things and send us emails, we, we read our emails. This mm -hmm. is information that's important, especially as we're moving to budget season because you know there's a lot of budget stuff here and implications that we have to decide. But if we don't have this information, we can't decide. And so the things that we're asking for, I would say, you know, be communicating with us so that we understand, especially when it comes to residents first, because this is mm -hmm. this is our meat and potatoes, and it feels very like we're after the fact, and this is really important to us to know what's happening. So I would just suggest that emails in between. Mm -hmm. so, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jane Fisher. Thank you. Happy to. Um, for the budget here, um, you know, with some of the projects that are exceeding like the million dollar mark and how you had mentioned about the funding that's available. Could there be considerations or have you looked into um, uh, amending the budget or like looking at the different ways to use the funds um, and going after more of the capital um, improvement fund instead of the um, general fund for some of the um, renovations? Um, let yeah. me just say that there has been a lot of, um, there are, are a lot of, projects that need to be funded. And the capital improvement projects funding um, has been um, stressed and strained and decisions had to be made, um, priorities had to be set for that funding. And um, we certainly um, uh, put in requests for funding for capital improvement funding, um, but there were other priorities that took um, uh, priority over the kinds of things that we have here. I think we have a really good budget here um, with what we have. I am fairly confident that if we go to the TGC for um, uh, ITP funds, that we will be able to uh, deal with that shortfall. Oh, what um, are the acronyms? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, so ITP is the Information Technology Portfolio which is uh, managed and governed by the Technology Governance Committee. 
and um, that it, they they uh, fund technology projects across the county. Um, we believe that a lot of the work that we're doing here will be uh, eligible for ITP funds. And so we're hopeful, very hopeful. Um, our CIO couldn't be here today, but we're very hopeful that we'll be able to uh, work through that process to meet this uh, shortfall. The And Joanna, you might want to say a little bit more about SIP funding or capital improvement what is TGC? funding. The TGC is the Technology Governance, Governance Committee, Committee, which mm -hmm. is the countywide uh, governance uh, team chaired by the chief information officer. Um, Mr. Sherk, Mr. Zhang, I'll just say as, as deputy county manager said, I'll underscore the request for um, capital improvement funds, the number of requests that come in countywide far exceed the, uh, the county's um, available funds within capital improvement. And that was why last year, county manager O'Connor made the decision that funding for service center renovations, which were was a, uh, um, had, of course, a very strong connection to the Residence First initiative, mm -hmm. could be funded out of the Residence First program, thus enabling um, capital improvement or CIP funds to be available for other countywide priorities. You know, similarly, it's it's all part of a large puzzle that we try to put together. Similarly, like um, uh, Aldrich Arena was in the CIP request, and we made a decision to move that to be a state bonding request. This is all part of trying to match the most, uh, the funding need to the most appropriate funding source. And it's difficult to look at these streams in isolation as opposed to part of that, that whole overall um, puzzle that that our, our colleagues in finance have the, have the lead on managing. And decisions were made um, based on the fact that we knew that we would have funding yes. through Residence First for this work to be done. Thank you. And I can just say, um, before I was a commissioner, I was on the Capital Improvements Committee. And a decision was made then that the larger projects would be separated out because otherwise you had so many, and not that there aren't large projects there, but not into the, generally not into the, you know, four to five million. Mm -hmm. um, because it just then took all, took all of that funds, all of those funds and used them there. So that was a decision, honestly, that was made quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair, Commissioner. Um, as I may add as an example of the integrated approach and how we are breaking down those silos, and as um, Deputy County Manager Francois said, we're hopeful that we'll make up the shortfall through those technology funds. And not only does our CIO, Chayton Kanacha, sit on the Residence First Advisory Board, but I also sit on the Technology Governance Committee as the, not as my director role, but as the chair of the Residence First Advisory Board. So we make sure that there's integration and, and coordination between those governance committees so that we're also thinking about residents first when we invest technology funds. Because as I think Commissioner Martinson said, the work we do is all about residents. So everything should have that ethos across the board and we are very integrated and aware of kind of what each group is doing and how we're funding so we can prioritize mm -hmm. accordingly. Thank you. Um, so I will hand it over now um, to Angie Petruk to talk about the Community a Accountability okay. Partnership work, which I will um, note is um, part of building our capability, especially around the resident experience work and also quality assurance across the county. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Chair, Commissioners, County Manager, so excited to be with you today to talk about our Community Accountability Partnership, or CAP. For the sake of time and uh, to make sure we get to our reach folks with Tiffany and, and Brenda, I will go through this pretty quickly, but I welcome any follow-up uh, questions that you may have. Um, just to give a high-level overview of what the Community Accountability Partnership is, is it's an example of us breaking down silos. So it came out of two separate arms of work. First, the Equity Action Circle, or EAC, which you might remember was part of our research or racial equity community engagement response team as part of the COVID-19 pandemic work. Um, this group, the EAC, was uh, a, a number of community members coming together through different subcommittees to really uh, become ingrained in our decision making um, with Ramsey County. And so uh, they made a recommendation 
uh, in particular, the Policy and Practices Subcommittee um, to launch um, an initiative where we better monitor and improve the quality of our services for our residents. Similarly, um, in winter of 2021, two, one, thank you. <laughs> That's what I get for not looking at my notes. Uh, 2021, um, the residents' first business and technolo technology architecture maps uh, proposed recommendations for Ramsey County to adopt a select number of metrics to measure resident satisfaction with their experience interacting with the county. So this need is coming out of two different spaces um, and really uh, uh, clearly an opportunity for collaboration across multiple areas of the county. When we boil down our goal outcomes, they're pretty simple. We want to improve customer experience and resident service. We want to have then fewer negative resident experiences and fewer complaints. And we want to collectively with community hold the county accountable for providing effective and efficient service delivery. So when we were coming together with these two different arms of work and trying to merge them with one core focus, we had a couple of core framing questions. The first is how do residents know about their rights when it uh, and what it means for interacting with the county? They have state and federal rights, both civil and human, and we need to make sure that we are upholding those in our daily um, interactions. And so how do residents know about them and how are they able to advocate for themselves? On the flip side, we wanna make sure our employees are set up for success. So how do employees know about those rights and what it means for them in their day-to-day -day roles? And how do we make sure that they feel comfortable and confident upholding those rights? And then um, of course we know that rights are important. And two, when we align with our values, we realize that that's not enough. So how do we raise the bar above um, what uh, the, is required by law and create a set of service standards to make sure that we are really aligning with our values to make sure that residents, no matter where they come in contact with our services, have the best quality of services possible um, and consistently. Next slide please. So this is just a snapshot of the Community Accountability Partnership. Um, you can see there are seven strategies with a number of different collaborative leads across the county. The first uh, strategy I want to highlight is community engagement. This is not only where this uh, work came from, but it's also embedded throughout each strategy and kind of tied off with a bow in strategy seven, the ongoing accountability body, which is the Resident Experience Advisory Council hub, which Tiffany um, will be talking about in a few slides. So I really want to call out where we are right now. That's strategy two. We know, um, again, those civil and human rights, but we're working on translating them to accessible language, to plain language, and really focusing on what does that mean, again, for our day-to-day -day services that we offer, and how are we making sure both uh, employees and residents know what that means for our interactions here. And then we're spending a lot of time, this is being led by Tiffany um, and Enterprise and Administrative Services, uh, particularly Resident Experience Design Planning Manager, um, and with support of me and, and our core team to establish service standards. So these service standards are uh, founded in our county's five values, and it's really looking at how do we live out those values in our day-to-day -day activities and interactions with our residents and others. They're gonna be the same across the county, no matter what service area, department, et cetera, again, for that consistency and continuity. It will uh, be uh, measuring resident satisfaction with our services, and then uh, we'll also have multiple opportunities to evaluate, um, have our residents evaluate and tell us how we're doing in areas for improvement. So that is something we're heavily focused on right now. We've been doing a lot of community engagement to make sure our community members are telling us this is how they believe we live out our, our five county values as it relates to service delivery. And then we're also engaging with both leaders and frontline employees who are going to be the ones most impacted by this work because we also want to make sure that they are reflected in our final uh, set of service standards. From there, once these are established, we are working on a, an administrative policy to formalize this. This will also include um, a civil rights plan as well as um, a, a language access plan or ELAB. Uh, Limited English Proficiency Plan. That's my partner, Tiffany. She'll be up in a second. We're working very closely on this and she's the best. 
Um, and so right now we see we have this civil rights plan and it's based out of HWAD, Health and Wellness Administration, which no longer exists. Um, and it focused really on FAS as well as social services. And so we are seeing the need for this across the county. So we are gonna be expanding that um, and it's gonna be based out of this administrative policy. Um, four and five, strategies four and five are pretty simple. It's how do both our employees know about this, have the skills and confidence to live it out. And then five is working with uh, REACH, the Residence Experience Advisory Council Hub, to create a communications and awareness campaign. Again, so that we are communicating with residents as they wanna be communicated with and as it works for them. So again, they know about their rights, they know about the service standards and they're able to advocate for themselves. Strategy six, unfortunately, if we are not upholding our, our rights or if we are um, not upholding our standards or if we're doing it exceptionally well, we wanna know about it. So there's gonna be a feedback process. So that could be both positive. I know that came up in a board meeting a, a week or two ago is this will be a centralized process where uh, um, community partners, residents, whomever can go in and submit. I had a really great experience with Ramsey County. Here's what, what it is or unfortunately I didn't have a very good experience. And so we are gonna be um, receiving that and tracking it um, and able to look at the themes um, and where some of those hotspots or challenge areas are that we can focus on. Um, we'll also have a separate reporting process called out for the rights violations, uh, working very closely closely with compliance on how also are we tracking that and making sure that we are reporting and looking at themes over time. The, so yep. just while you're on this point, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. This is great. Uh, is, is this the first time we've asked for resident feedback? I'm, I'm guessing on our website, like we, we just talked about a place where you can go and say if you think yeah. something should be done better. But is that so is that is that the place where or no? This is it's a very still separate. Yeah. So yeah. right now we have that. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Right now we have a lot of contact us options, oh, okay. but how it works is depending on the landing page that you're on, um, say you're on FAS's site or you're on social services site, that will go to a shared email inbox with those departments. So there's no um each department is it's up to them on how they handle it, track it, record it, et cetera, and making sure that we are following through and following up on those complaints or messaging or you know questions. Um, and we've heard mixed reviews from from residents on how well it's working. And we've also done an assessment um, with those shared inboxes to understand each service area, what are their processes for tracking and reporting, what's working well, and what could we do to improve, thinking about a more streamlined process. And so you'll keep that separate, you'll keep that, we won't have just one spot where it all goes, you'll keep right. the separate ones, yep. but you'll coordinate those yes. more clearly. Yes. Yeah. So it's still going to be up to departments to uh, respond with their processes. We're not going to be dictating how they respond, but there's going to be a more centralized um, reporting process and making sure that we're following through on the questions, complaints, et cetera, that come through for, again, the accountability of it. And yes. assessing like maybe there's system-wide issues that we need to be working And that on. brings us to, just do their own thing. exactly, number seven. Right. And so um, working with compliance and others uh, as data comes through the feedback process, the civil rights uh, complaint process, and then other efforts going on with evaluation, data, um, lots of reports come out from all the different areas in the county. So we are going to be using uh, our partnership with our Resident Experience Advisory Council Hub, which uh, it consists of residents who have uh, received services from us, as well as community partners, to present this information to them. And we can co-create solutions of um, how do we move forward and continue to improve our the quality of services that we offer our residents. Maybe it's training, maybe it's um, staffing changes, creative staffing changes to your point, Commissioner Reinhardt earlier. Um, we can work together um, to make recommendations on how do we continue to improve uh, the quality of service to our residents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Angie. Yeah. Uh, Chair, Commissioner, County Manager, I'm going to talk about the third goal of or the third um, uh, thing that we're going to priority. be working on. Right. Yeah, thank you. Under the strategic priority goals, the number three is increasing and improving integrated service delivery. Um, the strategies that we have there, what we're going to be doing in this arena, are building out the resident relationship management capability, which I'll be talking about in just a moment. 
Um, then I'll hand it back over to uh, Director Mosser. She's going to talk about improving and expanding service centers. And then we'll continue. Then we'll hand it over to um, Tiffany O'Dean, who's going to talk about building up the resident experience capability team um, in collaboration with residents and staff. So next slide. So, and in the interest of time, I could talk about this slide for a very long time, but I will try to give you a high level overview. And I think you're you're actually very well aware of some of this work because you've had the CRM system or the resident relationship management system, which is what we're calling it, installed um, and is working for you. But what we really are trying to do is make this a resident focused way of keeping um, data together, keeping interactions together so that we understand across um, a resident's life, lifetime how, what are all the interactions that they have with the county? One um, second. So I'm just wondering, who is the we? Is the we the, um, the, the advisory, what is it called here? Is that the we? So it's sponsored by the, yes, it's sponsored by the Residents right. First Advisory Board. Okay. And yeah, there's a lot of different acronyms here. Um, it's being done under their auspices. And actually, it's our technology team, the IS team, that's actually doing the hardcore work, if you will. Um, along with a lot of other folks involved in, from the from the county. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I'm sure, sure. On that. is this is this what our staff is this what our assistants are are participating in? Yeah. So yeah. they they've been trained in this. So yes. our offices are actually yes. doing this. Yes, you're one of the three pilot okay. sites or first okay. implementations okay. that we had. Um, we have one with SOS, the sexual assault okay. folks. Um, we have one with housing stability, and then we have one with the commissioner's okay. office. So we're hoping to continue to build that out okay. so that again we can have that integrated view of interaction okay. so that if somebody calls in, you'll know at the security level that's appropriate for you or for whoever the user is, what all, are all the different interactions that um, resident has had. Um, just, just sure. So, sorry, Mr. Chair, if we did, just because I, when, when I first got here, we wanted some central system where our, when our residents call us for with a question, we could put it into a place where we would actually be able to see what what's happening. So I was just explaining to Commissioner Moran that now, we, we didn't have one then, and so mm -hmm. we, we're finally getting one now. So this is great. Thank you. That when when a resident calls us, we can sort of track it and everything. Otherwise, we would pass it on to somebody we didn't really know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and this way, we can maybe see if someone else is doing it. I actually haven't yeah. been trained exactly. in it. Exactly. So I'm hoping this is all happening. Yeah. That our staff, that like my commissioner's assistant, is trained in this work so that they can track our resident requests on a better on a better basis yes okay thank you that's i couldn't have said it better that's exactly what it's supposed to do okay and, but we need to take it broader now yes. is that is the okay. idea and we need to have an umbrella over it so that again there's a lot of security concerns i'm not going to get yeah. into all of those today sure. but you can imagine if somebody comes into s the sexual assault area there nobody mm -hmm. else needs to know about that um and what we're really trying to do is build over that umbrella so that we can make sure that we understand that another challenge there is that um you, we have to make sure that we understand that everybody has a unique identifier because there's more than one Mary Johnson in Ramsey County. Right. So we have to make sure that we understand which Mary Johnson it is or whomever it might be, and that we are um, tracking the right information for that person. Um, bullet three here, I think is actually incredibly important to, which is capturing the information so that residents only have to tell their story once. Mm -hmm. We've all been passed around in other call centers where you have to, every time a new person gets on the phone, you tell your story again and again. You know, if my my data DSL line is broken, that's not so bad. But if I have something really that's tragic going on in my and I am in a needs based situation, I don't want to have to tell my story over and over again. And so this is the part of the compassionate part and the breaking down silos part that is incredibly important, and is very important for um, our staff. The fourth bullet really gets into what we were talking about earlier with navigator services. Um, it, this really will help those navigators and anybody serving residents around the county, but support proactive and complementary services. So we see that you are um, you are participating in this service. It means that you might be eligible for this one. And it helps um, particularly, again, our navigators look at that and be able to suggest and help people more than just what they came in asking for, which, you know, that's at the heart of all the service that we want to provide. Um, and then last on this bullet is really just talking about the fact that we have implemented this in certain areas, but we're working on the overall integration. So this is a really important um, tool, if you will, for us to be able to really be able to serve our residents better and, and achieving residents first. You know, and I probably missed this. 
I'm always, I'm just wondering, how do we do this? Is that through IT? Is that part of the budget? What needs to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Yes and yes. Okay. Um, it's it's technology. Um, so there is a technology system that we're in the process of implementing now. We're actually looking at doing it in cooperation at some point, potentially with other counties across the state. Um, through the NCCC, which is the Minnesota Computer Cooperative, County Cooperative, I think. Don't quote me on that. Consortium. But Consortium, Consortium yeah. thank you. That's the other CC. Um, but because everybody has these same issues, but it is it is technology based. But then it's obviously um, you know the people who are actually using it and using it and giving us the requirements and making and, sure. And real quick, how long? When would this happen? How well, long would this take for this to become a reality? Um, we've already done the three separate implementations, but for the umbrella and the overall, we're probably looking at a, probably about a two-year timeline, um, something like that. It depends on which direction we choose to go. If we choose to go with the whatever the county consortium ends up doing, or we end up building something ourselves. Okay. It'll be an iterative process, though. It's not. It's going to be kind of you know growing and growing. It'll continue to grow and improve and get better. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so. Like I said, we could talk for a long time on this, and I think it's an important technology tool. But um, in the interest of time, I'll hand it back over to Director Moss. And we definitely want to make time to hear from our uh, resident, yeah. yes. um, Barbara. She's, yeah. um, and and yes. we definitely want to hear from yes. Um, So I will be brief, although I know in saying I'll be brief, this is an area you guys want to hear a lot more about. We've talked a little bit about what we're planning with service centers. I want to note that we are planning to expand services and service centers over the coming months to include property tax and vital records and service centers and, and um, some expanded social services. We're also looking to improve language services. We had seven new language specific um, navigators, which you guys approved the funding and positions for, so thank you, um, late last year. So they all started yesterday. Um, <laughs> Melinda was with them yesterday. Uh, and so we're continuing to improve and expand that work and also the virtual services footprint. So I'm excited to come back to you by emails and by workshop to give you more information. And I want to, um, unless there are any burning questions right now, move on to our next so when you follow up with data, will you just give us like how many people are coming into each service mm -hmm. center? And there is a dashboard on that now. I can send you the okay. link to it after we end this meeting so you can see that Perfect. in real Thank time you. too. And so I will hand it over to Tiffany to talk about the resident experience work, which is, um, I would say, our number one priority. I know we're not supposed to rank them <laughs> in um, the residents first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chair, Commissioners, it's an honor to sit amongst you and share um, the work that we're doing. You'll hear mostly um, from Barbara, but I just wanted to share when I'm in certain spaces and conversations and meetings, um, the principles that we have here resolving root cause, uh, residents first, residents centered, uh, co-creating strategies with REACH, residents, community partners, and county staff, applying solutions actively and repeatedly um, with REACH residents and strategic partners. Uh, this is what um, we're founded on, what I'm founded on, and what uh, we want to move Ramsey County forward with when we're having conversations about all of the projects that were brought forward, uh, residents and myself are a part of. Uh, we bring this back to the Resident Experience Advisory Council Hub to say, so this is what we thought, this is where it came from, what are your thoughts? It's really removing our county business um, expertise out of the room. It's what are what does what does the residents say? Um, what have they heard? And let's really focus on uh, uplifting their perspectives, their journey, because we want um, not just satisfaction, but uh, uplifting the livelihood. Um, it's about the the end of what their goals are. And so when we have conversations mm -hmm. with um, multiple members, it's this is what's been brought forward. Um, and so the Resident uh, Experience Advisory Council Hub, we meet uh, when the second Wednesdays of the month, and um, it's often in the community, it isn't virtual, and when um, establishing this advisory, it was, what time do you want to meet? What works best? Where? Because um, I really wanted to ensure that we're co-creating this advisory council hub. It's not about what works for me, it's not what works for the county, it's what's working for them. And so. Um, that's kind of just an example of this is how we're going to start this off. 
um, and what this is going to be about. And it really is uh, guiding um, the projects that are brought forward and continuing to. But also, what is it that you want to hear about? And what is it that you want to learn about so that we can um, talk to others across the county about what you want? Um, so that's um, a little bit about the Resident Advisory uh, Experience Advisory Council Hub reach. So um, you want to... I don't know if anybody has questions, but I'm saying that Barbara, yeah. It's firepower. We have to, yeah. <laughs> um, the expert in the room. Wow, that's a pretty picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. All right. Okay. Well, um, Barbara Freeman, um, I just want to be honest. When I first came, when I first heard about the resident um, advisory, Experience Advisory Council Hub. <laughs> I was interested only for one reason, because I was frustrated, angry, and I wanted somebody on the inside to tell me how to get things I needed done. So when I came to the meeting, first meeting, you know, it was a group, uh, various group of people, and I did get to vent and say <laughs> the problem, but at the same time, I began to hear and listen to all the things that was being done to make it easier for people like me. I didn't expect to go back into the system as I, I did. I had to retire early, health reasons. So uh, I was trying to get uh, recertified for medical assistance in SNAP. And it was such a hard process. I was totally peeped off mm -hmm. and wanted to get it done. And I went to the Maplewood Hub and it, I turned in all the paperwork but it didn't happen. Something happened along the way that the paperwork didn't get what it's supposed to be. And so it was a lot of back and forth. And I was so angry when I came. I was expecting to just go off them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Tiffany and the other person that was online, they were really vested, invested in hearing what was the problem so that they could resolve them. And when I came in, it was talking about uh, the resident um, rights. How do we know our rights? Well, not really. So that was interesting to me. And then they were giving feedback on what had been talked about previously. I started in September. Mm -hmm. So whenever this started, it was way before my time. Anyways, I you know, I got caught up fairly quickly because um again, Tiffany and the other people that was working with us was very informative. Um, we asked questions that gave us feedback. So um then I got to experience some other things behind the, the other side of the desk, so I, <laughs> so to speak. Because I was thinking that you just go fill out the application, you verify my income and my living arrangements, and then boom, there it, there it is. But after being in on this council, I realized there's a lot that goes into taking care of this community, the Rams County residents, and that you know kind of calmed me down a little bit. But anyways, um, I got to experience the the process of of um, um we talked about. Uh, making a, a catalog, make it easier to access the different um, departments and uh, resources that Ramsey County for different languages. That was interesting because, uh, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So then we was a, I was able to participate in the restructuring or just talking about re, uh, redesigning the hub. That was interesting. Nobody ever asked my opinion about where to sit, what, what I needed, you know. So, yeah, it was um, very enlightening. And then it gave me a greater appreciation for the people that that was working these jobs. Mm -hmm. The last thing I got to experience, which was quite nice, was to sit up on the um, hiring process for the navigators. I never been invited to sit on the table to hire anybody, you know, like that. So that was really nice. Um, I think that was here. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cool people. And, uh, so that was an experience that I never would have gotten had I not went to this meeting. And so now it's not just about me and what I need. It's about the community. I'm older now. When I started in 93, I think it was, 96 when I moved to St. Paul, um, a lot of things had transpired. And being an older client or uh, resident, it, it's important to know how to navigate through these systems because it, it could be demeaning. You know, uh, I didn't always use the services, but I'm glad to know that they're there. But I would like to continue, um, you know, um, making it easier for other people to mm -hmm. access, especially seniors. Uh, that's what I'm here for, the seniors today. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> it, it, it can get complicated. 
And it can get frustrating when you have younger people telling you, well, I don't have your paperwork. Mm-hmm. I'll call you back and never hear back from you. Things like that. But again, I experienced some different things. I experienced uh, the planning of the renovations and the uh, catalog that's coming and also the hiring process. And even this today, this is an experience for me. Um, you know, I never would have seen myself in a place where the big people, the big <laughs> wigs are, you know, planning things and making things happen. So I think it, this is going to work if, you know, keep the residents involved, it will work because it gives us a different perspective. We're not, I'm not angry anymore. I'll tell you that much. I really appreciate the opportunities to see what really goes on to help us in this community. So, thank you, Ms. Barbara. You are you are the big wig in the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly clear. Um, I guess my question for you is: so you've had this experience now, and you're you're kind of in on the ground floor, helping us make these claims. Do you feel like your voice is continuously being heard to make the improvements? Yeah, because we see in writing when we come back to the next meeting, we see the the uh, feedback. You know what's been ha- what's happening, or you know Tiffany gives us she's always giving us updates or asking, and that's so important to me for somebody to ask me what I need. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, thank you, and thank you for giving of yourself, your experience, and your expertise so that we can get these services better. I mean, firsthand, you're the auditor in chief of Ramsey County. <laughs> <laughs> And so you're helping us do better. So I just want to say thank you so much for your thank time you. and investment. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So Barbara, um, thank you for being here and uh, yeah. vol- you know volunteering your time, become part of the solution. You know, because we could be angry, we can complain, but we have to get to some solutions. And so since you're you're not angry, why? Because did your services get taken care of? Did it's, was it's, it shorter? I mean, what happened? Well, Tiffany um, helped me. She, you know, just she let me talk about it, and then I asked her questions about it, and she kind of navigated me through who I needed to talk to to get things done. Mm-hmm. And then I got a response back, which was very um, it's that really impressed me because I got a response back mm-hmm. right away, right away. So I know it doesn't happen like that all the time for everybody, mm-hmm. but because um. Just being able to come in the room made the difference. Now I can actually say I'm not angry because I know it takes a lot to get mm-hmm. the help to us. How long did it take? From the point that I made my complaint with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, what, about two weeks? Because it was, it was on me, really. I didn't know it was my fault. It was on How me. Was your fault? That, mm-hmm. um, my the the uh people from Social Security was was not giving didn't give me information that they was giving Ramsey County so I actually was getting more money than I knew about and I was say I don't have this money I don't get this you know just yeah. never thought to look at my account to see what was there mm-hmm. and I did find out but now I had but it, with that being said I have to pay that money back because I wasn't qualified for that money. Mm-hmm. so it was that's how um. But had not not got to the right person to tell me what the actual problem was, I never would have, you know, it would have been still a problem because I had got so frustrated. I just said, forget it. I, I'll just do it out. But I need the medical assistance. So, <laughs> so you've been back there listening, mm-hmm. right? Are we going in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Uh, are we able to service the people? Because you got special attention. Right. Right. Not everyone gets special attention. Are we going in the right direction to serve people so that they can know how to navigate the system? Yes, I think you are because you want to, first of all, serve the people. You want to make sure that they're being served because I, I've seen something up there. I don't know what that was. That's okay. But it was it's about you, right? basically, um, it was regarding the residents' rights. Mm-hmm. That's important because if you don't know the rights you have, you you won't get full benefits. So um, even though it was a special thing for me, I see that you guys are going in the direction that you're including um, my perspective or other residents' perspective. So our voice could speak for the community. And if you do what we say, no, what we, <laughs> we suggest, <laughs> then, you know, really, 
it could help. So, um, so and then a, another thing I think would probably help is you make it more, um, people know what you do mm -hmm. in the community. We, see, had I not known mm -hmm. all this was going on, I would just, mm -hmm. uh, this worker just hates me and not doing what I need her to do. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know that all of this, all uh, this month funding and all these different boards and all this is, it's working for the community as a whole. I think it may, it makes me more appreciative. I'm sure others would be too. And the, and that would help us to, you know, kind of calm down with from trying to just, you know, get so frustrated and impatient. Well, we don't want anyone to be frustrated, be impatient, but we do want people to be served. And we right. do want people to know how to navigate and get what they need, right? And so, you know, part of your work right now too is not to just inform us, Mm -hmm. But you're going back out to the community, you're going to inform people, right? Yeah, so that they true. can have a better experience too, right? You become the messenger of the message, right? Too. Mm -hmm. well. I tell them where the hookup is. That's right. I have um, several questions. Um, so I will just um, number them. But first, I just want to thank you, Barbara, for you know your time um, and your effort and feedback and investment into Ramsey County. Just really want to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, and also, of course, our staff for making it such a welcoming place that residents do feel valued and heard. Um, those are exactly the values that we want to embody in our work. Um, my my first question, this is probably more uh, geared towards staff and or Barbara, if you want to chime in as a resident too, feel free to as well. Um, but for our goals, what's our measure of success? Um, it was mentioned in our goals like earlier in a few slides. Um, number three for um, REACH, uh, for our Resident Experience Advisory Council, um, what are the demographics and are they all in, involved meaningfully? We're hearing from Barbara, but you know, also from uh, what about other residents and are they reflective of our diverse community? Um, number three is, um, are we pulling together groups with uh, limited English proficiency to be included in this and or how are we engaging um, with folks? Um, and then number four, um, let's see, um, how do we respond um, to residents when it, when they are frustrated um, about, um, you know, state federal program requirements, right? Because most of the times they will say, oh, you know, the county told me that I can't get this help here. But really, it's because we're bounded by state and federal mm -hmm. program policies. So are we articulating that in our communications with residents? about you know the di differences between state federal program policy guidelines as well as county policies mm -hmm. these are excellent questions <laughs> and we want to be able to address each and every one of them and i see that you've typed them out so if you can email them to us um we will work on a response to get to all of you um but we could do a whole another workshop on what you just asked there and <laughs> and would be happy to do so um but in the interest of time um can, would you be willing to uh, receive responses in that way oh uh, that would, would be all perfectly fine. yes absolutely yes. um and then i would also just want to uh, share this with um you know uh, for going forward in our board workshops that as when we mention um community groups or advisory groups getting that demographics of who is it who okay. is participating yep. um, should be included in the workshops sure. in the PowerPoint mm -hmm. presentations, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Joe. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know we're trying to get out of here, but I just want to personally thank you also, Barbara, for, for being a part of all of this. And this is, we, we don't, we, we're glad that, that you were served and we don't want it to be special treatment. I mean, we want that to be the treatment mm -hmm. that people get, that they all get served. And thank you so much. We so value your input. And I'm glad you feel valued with that input because one of my asks is that in all of these community advisory councils that we have, I, I hear from people, well, I'm there, but I don't feel like I'm contributing. I don't feel like it's important, I, you know, and I really want, we value people's time. So we want your time to be valuable. We don't want you just to be there to be there. So mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that you're finding it a uh, you know worthwhile experience. And if you're, you're ever not, I know you'll you'll share that with us. But <laughs> that's what we would ask. Yeah. And I'm gonna just ask for that. And, and when, whenever we get a report on community advisory councils, you know, that's one of my um concerns as well is that we really have people feel like their time is worth it. But thank you so much. You've just been I could ask I think we could all ask questions all day, but we know you're participating in this process. 
and we appreciate it. And thank you so much for doing for all your. I also want to like acknowledge oh. Tarad. She's another one of our members been here too. So oh, um, shaking my head the whole time. Uh, okay. <laughs> so this might sound like a strange right. question as we're talking about resident first. Um, <laughs> But when I look at the, the goals and the outcomes and what we want, one of the biggest um, concerns or information that I have received comes from staff who's doing the work, who are frontline workers, who feel that they are working so hard mm -hmm. that they are doing all that they could, uh, but don't feel appreciated and undervalued. They feel undervalued. They feel like there's not enough support for them, mm -hmm. that they don't have enough knowledge and information. So I feel like even though it's resident first, if staff don't have the tools that they need mm -hmm. and get burnt out mm -hmm. and yes. leave mm -hmm. because we have so, you know, we have resident rights and all those things are good, right? That we should have those things. But again, if we don't keep those frontline, those workers mm -hmm. at, you know, in our mind as we're doing as, because they will feel attacked mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, you, we have all these things we need to do for residents, but we don't have the support that we need. Mm -hmm. And so I want to think about that, but also think about as, you know, as I look, and I know you guys are awesome people, right, mm -hmm. who are part of the executive team, but I feel like there's some people missing, like those who do the work, right, those mm -hmm. who are doing the work, their mm -hmm. voices, and not that they come to you and tell you and tell somebody else, but I feel like they need to be a part of the team, mm -hmm. right? Because they are doing the work. They know where the gaps are. They know what's missing. They mm -hmm. they, they know too. Um, and it's very high level here. Mm -hmm. Who's the people who's making these decisions? And not that I'm, you know, I'm just saying it's very high level. And I think some of those folks who's doing this work should be a part of the decision making process. And Mr. Chair, that's a perfect <laughs> uh, segue to, I, I hope that um, you will listen to the the recording of this because we ask for a lot of information mm -hmm. and it really comes down to, I think where I started and where you were just talking is about how the work is getting done. Do we have people in the right places to do that? Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that instead of listing them off here, which I only have mine, and you got a lot of other requests here, but please do listen and follow up with us um, because I, I I know we've got a workshop this afternoon, but there were um, there have been workshops where we've asked for information. And we quite frankly haven't gotten it. Not you guys, <laughs> but I think we need to do some follow up on that. So I, I will say that after every workshop because it's it's important for us to have the information, especially when we're looking at budget decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for thank all you. your good work. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank I, I just for text with Karen and Joanna for we need you in our annual video. And I'm here to talk about that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank